Mm-hmm. It's a learned behavior. It starts in our childhood, like myself. I'm 45. My parents been married for 44 years. They're mm-hmm. still together to this day. Where do you see that anymore? Nobody values that. Nobody wants that. They just want to hump. Or, you know, I just want to hump and have a key. You know, like, you know, they're just making it so simple-minded. And, hey, I want to be with this woman. I love this woman. And due to me loving this woman, I want to produce children with this woman and extend a family, have a family, show the world the way it's supposed to be. When I pray every morning, I pray for that. I ask God, God, please bring the fam- bring family, bring marriages and relationships back into the home to show the children and the people the way it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be husband and wife and the children. Yeah, I, I just Not daddy okay, over there by himself raising four kids, the daddy doing all this by himself, or the mama way up here. You know, a lot of people break up because they think it was the wrong head. Mm-hmm. Thinking with the wrong head, not the one on the top, but the one down south between the legs. Oh, I'm bringing her because she cheated on me. She cheated on me. Everybody cheat. So now what? You left that person because they cheated. Now you're going to go over to the next person and they're going to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. They all cheat. It's just how you're going to get through the process. If you are married and that person cheated, you got to figure out the process. Mm-hmm. Now, how I'm going to get over this process? Mm-hmm. What I'm gonna do to make things better? Yes, see, I, I I agree with you. Now, remember, you said that you said that uh, uh, we men put on a front to tell women what they want to hear in order to lay with them and stuff like that, right? We put on the front. Um, well, I think that that I think if you're around somebody a long enough, you interested in a guy or something like that. If you're around him a long enough, he's going to show himself. Just like how you just said that I say I want a relationship and all this stuff, and I say that stuff, but you've been around you've been around me enough now to know that you've been like you know this, you've been observing me and watching me like you know this boy don't want this man don't want no damn relationship. He bullshit. You know what I'm saying? So why can't sisters like be around a nigga long enough to okay? We know that this nigga he's putting on his front. He loved me. He say he want to have a, he want to take the condom off. He want to make a baby with me and all this shit. Let me just watch this fool. Let me watch him for a minute before I lay with him and see if he really is, is about what he's saying. Just like how you watched me and you and you observed and said that I say, oh, I want a relationship and all this, but you would watch me and the way I carry myself, you was like, oh, this dude don't want a relationship. Look how he carry himself. So I think, uh, like my, you know, like I said, like with my cousin, she was with this dude a couple months in the uh, pregnant with him. You know what I'm saying? If she had a, and, and if she, and then she, now she's saying he ain't shit. Had she took the time and been around him and they, oh, well, let me just see, let me, let's hang out and let me see how you do, but we see how you do, homie. Let me see how you roll. You know, I'm, I'm horny. I'm attracted to you. I want to knock it out. I want, I want you to get it, but let me see how you roll this. You talking about, I just want to have a baby and all this kind of stuff. Let me see how you roll. Had my cousin spent enough time with this man long enough to see, to see how he really rolled. She thought, oh, hell no. Nah. Yeah, baby, this fool. You know what I'm saying? She would have saw what I saw when I first met the dude. Mm-hmm. Now she not sits. necessarily no, not necessarily no. because you up under somebody, you're going, they're going to show themselves eventually. No, let me tell you, they, the, I, what you're saying, I agree with you. Mm-hmm. But there's that but. It goes back. It's crazy, but it goes back to a learned behavior. Somewhere they seen that. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Somewhere, whoever they were raised by, they seen that, so they think, oh, it's normal, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's I think it's normal because it's like, well, I've been exposed to this all my life. You know, that's mm-hmm. like, say for instance, if you know, um, your parents, you know, they've been married for years and then they break up and then mom go her way and then dad go his way and then you seen your dad how he treated women yeah. or how he treats your mom or whatever and you didn't like it or mm-hmm. you just. Just said, you know what? Hey, I gotta stay in the child's place. I, you know, I don't like it, but I'm not gonna expose those behaviors when I get grown. Ooh, when I get grown, I'm gonna treat my woman good, or I'm gonna do better than my dad was to my mother. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It becomes a learned behavior. Either you're gonna learn from it, or you're gonna do better from it. Well, especially if you're young, right? Exactly. Like a lot of young you women. Know, right. So that's your your parents are your first role models. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What you see from them is what you get out of life. 
when you're young, you you know, when you're young, your tastes are different than the, you know than they were when you get older. Like, say, since let me ask you this, right? Mm-hmm. When you, how old were you when you got pregnant with your first kid? Uh, twenty. You was twenty, and then your second. Mm-hmm. Twenty six. You was in your twenty. You was young. Now, let me ask you this. Be, be be serious. Don't just don't just say you know the question. That's the no, only, don't, don't, don't just, it correctly. Yeah, just answer. Yeah. If you look back at your children's fathers, right, mm-hmm. and then at from your perspective now, mm-hmm. would you have gotten pregnant by them now if you were able to have kids? Like, would you have have kids with these men now? Hindsight. No. See, cause right, cause you. I mean, like the first one, maybe, cause you don't have two. Yeah. Um, his father. Yeah, man. So the first one, you know, it all, it, it's just the whole situation. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. both of my situations were different. You get what I'm saying? So I think, how can I put it? Like my first, the, my daughter's my dad, uh, my little, my oldest daughter's father. He was the friend. He was a friend. He did very well. I mean, provided a roof over my head. He got me an apartment. He's very responsible. Had a, a decent job. Everything, right? Mm-hmm. But then once we was together, and I mean. I was working too, because he, he didn't want me to work, and I thank God that I still kept my job. He's like, oh, yeah, I gotta work, blah, 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 blah. I was so used to working because I was <laughs> in a job when I was like 15, you know, summer school jobs, you know? Uh-huh. So then I said, okay, I'm gonna still work regardless. Thank God I did, because mm-hmm. kind of find out, months had went by, and he was, I found he was married. Wow. That was very hard for me. Very, it was a lot of trauma. Like, why would you do that? Why would you put me in a part, put us in a place, right? Mm-hmm. And then I get a call that you have a whole family. Mm-hmm. Now, See what how, I'm saying? That's a whole front. We're going to dinner. We're, you know, I mean, everything like a couple. Yeah. How long was y'all kicking it before you before you got pregnant by him? How long was y'all kicking it? Uh, probably like a, about a year and a half, I think. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Before you got pregnant for him? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. It's like you don't really, you can't, you know, you get an impression that this is a good person and that things are going to be the way it should be. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I never expected my children to be without father. I love my father all my life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then with my second daughter, Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're not doing with it. Yeah, is is it you think that it's it's uh like So you don't know a situation. You don't never know a situation but, where you get with somebody, you thinking it's all good. Like you can meet a beautiful go out right now and go to the beach and meet a beautiful woman, but within a year you start realizing all kind of stuff. You're like, Oh no, I, I can't do this. I can it might take you a year because you just see the beauty in her. You just think, Oh, well, you know what, she'll get better, you know, she's just traumatized or she's you know, you know, she's talking John and John messed her little head up, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of times you gotta. I mean, a lot of times, uh, you have to. Like, for instance, like, like most, like in my cousin's case, she was dating, you know, a street dude. So I was like, I mean, he, he, you know, I hate to say it, but most street dudes ain't. A lot of them don't stick around. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, no, my well, no, not. Okay. 
I misjudged street, you. I know some. I know more street dudes that be with their children than I know about these professional people that don't be with their children. I got a lot of um, homeboys that I grew up with, and they're really good in there. They're not even with their kids' mother, but trust and believe they take care of their kids. They mm. go visit them. They don't, they pay child support and everything, and they still spend time with their children. A lot of guys when they get put on child, oh, I ain't giving her now. I, that's it. I'm, I pay two. $200 and that's it. I had to explain to a guy I was like, he got so angry because he has to pay uh, what was it, $500 in child support every month and he complained. I said, you're really complaining that you pay child support? You're yeah. like, yeah, I shouldn't have to pay. Dude, that $500 will never compare to what a mother does on a daily. Mm -hmm. When that child is sick, that five hundred dollars don't cut. And, and she's like, when well, she get her nails done, that she already done paid for your child's shoes and everything. That's reimbursement money that she already done spent. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? How are yeah. you mad? Because she went and got her. You don't feel like she deserved to get her nails done with with the you produce, you help produce that baby. Mm -hmm. She the baby don't live with you. The baby live with the mama. So she the one got to get up every night. <laughs> That's all you're doing. Mm hmm Never good enough. That child needs to know that you love them. Not fine not just being financially, but physically in their lives. Dudes are not doing that. But our black men are just having that's it. Dude, what you said, I'm glad you spoke. That's what they're doing. They're having babies and they're running off. And leaving these poor moms by themselves to figure it all out. They don't even want to be in, if they can't get no coochie, they don't want to be involved with the baby. What kind of crap is that? You brought the baby. You, I didn't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. Hell. Like, you, you know, you're not giving him no coochie, shit. Mm -mm. That's ridiculous. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But I'm glad I Please. stopped having children. When I realized our black men were like mentally disturbed, I stopped because I wanted more children. I wanted at least four, you know. Mm. But when I started realizing that our black men are troubled, I'm like, no, I can't, I cannot um, go into a third baby daddy or um, an un unmarried situation again. I'm not, I tried it. I'm not doing it ever again. So yeah, but, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, but sisters, sisters, I mean, nobody wants, to, sisters have issues too. Nobody wants to say that. Sisters do have issues. They, they, they do have issues, That's and like problem. I go, like I said, it's a learned behavior. It's insecurities. They, uh, women have insecurities. That's they seen their daddy be gone for two and three weeks, so they praying and hope when they start to get a boyfriend, that he doesn't do that to them. They have issues too now. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Yeah. But uh, but a lot of it is triggered by men. And they don't understand that a woman, if you, if a, if a man is not giving his woman any type of reasoning to think that he's out here doing something, that woman is going to do what she's supposed to do as a woman, right? Mm -hmm. But the moment she finds out that she cannot trust you and you're out here doing whatever and being whatever, and she going to hurt you. She's going to hurt that man to the core. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to stop. That's one thing I can say. I, I can honestly say that. Woman, once she get that, she's good until you show her otherwise. Mm -hmm. You show her otherwise, she's going to flip out. You're going to be like, what the hell did I get myself into? I think what it is is accountability. I think black women need to have accountability in black men as well. Nobody wants to take accountability. Everybody, if you would have did this, I wouldn't have did this. Nobody <laughs> wants to put it on somebody else the way they are. Nobody wants to say I'm fucked up. Nobody wants to say they fucked up. No, I don't think so. What I think, <laughs> what I think is that it's a lack of communication. Mm. Okay, nobody wants to communicate about anything. They just want to do stuff. Mm. Nobody wants to communicate about hey, this is what I'm looking for. Like, like even with dating, like how you said, oh, you know, I would like to be in a relationship. I do. You know, 
but but by you saying that you don't love me somebody for myself i look at action so you don't love me Tori. consistency stability and security is big for me mm-hmm. and i always tell her that when a dude black 